All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. And this evening, what I have for everyone is my 24 hours later follow up video with the Apple Watch SE first generation. So, <clears throat> These videos are going to be published a little bit out of order because I'm actually recording this on the Thursday and the unboxing and setup and first impressions of this is going to go up on the Friday. But if you look at the videos and you see the purchasing dates, then you'll know the actual timeline for the videos dropping and you'll know the actual release for the videos dropping. But that being said, I have had the Apple Watch SE first generation for 24 hours now. It's fully set up the way I want to use it, at least one of the ways I want to use it. And let's talk about it. So, first things first, um, I went through a regular day today. I didn't work out today, but I went through a regular day today. Um, I fully charged it. Uh, yesterday evening at around, I want to say eight and then the setup process and getting it configured the way I wanted took me about 30 minutes. So after that, I, I would say I fully started using it about eight 30, but it was fully charged and ready to go by like eight o'clock. And as of the recording of this video, it is eight Oh five. So I am officially just over 24 hours, about 24 hours and five minutes. So what do I think so far? Well, number one, let's talk about this band. As I said in the unboxing and setup and first impressions, this is a comfortable band. I just don't like the clasping style. It's a little bit awkward to uh, put on and take off. So I most definitely, when I get some more money, I'll probably be picking up some more bands for this. Most likely, I'll probably be picking up the same band styles as what I had for the CMF Watch Pro, the first generation, and the same watch styles for what I had when I used the Galaxy Watch Classic. So, most likely, if I could find the similar band watch styles for those in this size, that's probably what I'm going to pick up for the Galaxy Watch SE first generation. So there's that. But other than the clasping mechanism for the band, this is a nice comfortable band. And with regular usage so far, it's been working out no problems. Okay? So from that aspect, 24 hours later, it's doing really good. Now, let's talk about some of the software and some of the application. Now, I'm going to do a full... Um, <clears throat> application video my favorite watch faces and all that good stuff similar to what i did for the cmf watch pro i'm gonna have another video for that so uh watch face recommendations um some issues and fixes that apple can do to make the app a little bit easier for average consumers like myself but talking about the watch and the interface so far i have to say it's pretty good. It's it's fairly straightforward. I covered some some of this stuff in the unboxing and first impressions via post edits, but the navigation is actually really really uh easy and straightforward. So you swipe up for your quick toggles. That also gives you quick access to your battery percentage. I like that. I like that a lot, right? Then you swipe down to get to your notifications and this does everything missed phone calls text messages app notification app notifications everything so that's pretty cool as well then if you want to use your siri you just press and hold your crown button and then you start talking to siri and that works no problem the dictation on here is actually kind of nice so that's pretty good there she didn't understand me because that was just a basic basic run-on sentence but that Siri integration is nice and I can get her to do stuff right from my wrist so if I ask her right now what's the weather like this evening in Palm Bay Florida Here's the weather for Palm Bay, Florida and it gives you the output right from the watch's speakers so that's pretty nice that's really really nice okay so I like that and then you push the crown button again to go home so that's fairly easy to understand, right? 
Then, if you want to pull up your recent apps, it's just a tap on the power button, and this brings up your recent apps, okay? And then if I tap the crown again, I go home. Now, if I tap the ground, tap the crown button from the home screen, this brings up my applications. And this is a combination of Apple Watch applications and applications on my device. So that's really, really nice in my opinion there. And I tap the crown again to go home. So this is all very straightforward and easy to understand once you wrap your head around the initial setup. So I will have to say the integration and navigation of the watch 24 hours later, Apple has done a really good job here. So good stuff there as well, okay? Now, let's talk about some of the things about the application itself after using it for 24 hours. Let me put this down real quick, okay? And then I also like the fact that when you're charging the watch and it's on your charger, the watch can go into like a uh, night clock mode. So it gives you the uh, battery percentage for the watch and it gives you like a, a night nightstand clock mode which doesn't drain that much battery while it charges. I like that as well. That's what y'all saw in the unboxing and setup. All right, I originally thought that was a always on display mode. That was a night clock mode because it detected that it was charging and it was it detected that it was in a certain orientation. So it put itself into night clock mode. I didn't know that at the time, but I learned that after the fact. So that's really cool as well. And I also... It, it populated after the fact, but you do get the battery percentage on your device. So you can see right now, my watch is the only thing connected to my device. I did have my earbuds connected, but the battery died and it's charging. It's in the case charging right now, but you can get the battery percentage on your device on the home screen or lock screen of your device simply by just making sure everything is connected and synced up, okay? So, I figured that out. I was a little confused in the unboxing setup and first impressions video, but growing pains. New OS, new smartwatch, never had an Apple Watch before, growing pains, all right? So let's talk about the application, right? So I have fully set up and configured the watch and I have fully customized some watch faces. First things first, this is why I love YouTube. Because initially, after my full charge, I was having a syncing issue between my phone and the watch itself. Like, I customized the whole watch face and it wouldn't sync to the watch. So I'm like, oh God, is it broken? Do I have to do a replacement? No, nah, let me get on YouTube, let me get on Google. And I figured out how to fix it. So basically, there was a syncing issue between the watch and the phone. And basically, I just had to reset the sync from the application. Then I had to turn off the phone, turn off the watch, uh, wait 10 seconds, turn on the phone first, turn on the watch, and then let everything resync. And then all my watch faces came over no problem. So you can see these are one, two three, four of the watch faces that I downloaded and customized, right? And all I gotta do to switch them over is if I tap on one and we go down and I do set as current watch face, it automatically goes over to the watch. So now I've set this watch face as my current watch face. And if I pick up the watch, y'all can see my new watch face is set. I was having an issue with that when I first set it up so that when I config when I configured my watch face, it wasn't syncing over. But like I said, I figured out how to fix that. And another thing that I like is how Apple did their integration with the customization of the watch faces, right? Without leaving the main portion of the Apple Watch app. So if I go back, it takes us to the main, main portion, right? But if I tap on any one of my watch faces, it will take me into the customization portion very seamlessly, and then I can customize it and sync it, right? And then go back, and then I can switch watch faces, and I can do 
customizations for the apps on my Apple Watch just like that. Or if I want to find new watch faces, I just tap on the faces gallery section and then I can find new watch faces. I can make my own watch faces. I really, really like that. The seamlessness of how Apple integrates everything and the overall look and presentation of it is really, really nice. Again, I'm going to get into full detail on this in another video, but I have to say 24 hours later, I like the app integration. Once once everything is working the way it's supposed to, really, really good. And then you got a Discover tab, and this is basically all your tutorials for the Apple Watch, right? But the only tutorial that wasn't in here that I thought was kind of weird, or maybe I didn't see it, was fixing the syncing issue that I came across. But then again, as I said, thank you for YouTube, thank you for Google, because I was able to find that issue and figure out how to resolve it. So Apple, maybe you want to do a uh, tutorial on how to resync your device with your Apple Watch and put that in your tutorial section. But Really good app integration, really good layout, really easy to understand. Good stuff, y'all. Good stuff there indeed. And honestly, 24 hours later with the app, it is really good stuff in my opinion. All right? Really good stuff indeed. Now, I've been using the uh, activity dial because I like to track my steps and get the time in seconds. And I also added a battery percent widget and the date. So that's pretty much everything that I need for my uh, watch face at a glance. So that's why I've been using the active digital uh, watch face. But I also customized the Nike watch face. I like that because it gives me the time, the date, the uh, weather for the day, and then my activity rings. The only thing I didn't add here was a battery percentage. I can actually go back and add one. Now that I think about it, I should go back and add one in here. But we'll get into this. But for the most part right now, I'm liking this activity dial here, our activity watch face. Let me set this one back because this is pretty much everything that I want to look at at a glance. The only thing that I couldn't get on here at a glance was my sleeping information. But you can easily get into that on the watch itself or inside of the application here. So not being able to have that at a glance, that's not too bad. But I have to say, guys and gals, 24 hours later with the Apple Watch SE, it does seem to be really, really good. Now, I do have to say this, right? Um, based on my other videos and some of the feedback that I got from my other videos, I was very, very hesitant or skeptical about the battery life like when i told my subscribers and followers i think the next smartwatch that i want to look at was going to be the apple watch se everybody was like oh that's a great idea e go ahead and do it man we would love your style of coverage on it i'm like okay cool but then i also got some other feedback like ayo be careful because the battery life on it is not the best. It's kind of similar to what you get on your Galaxy Watch Classic, right? It's not the best. But fortunately, 24 hours in, this battery life actually seems to be really, really good. Like I said, I'm still on the first initial charge, right? First initial charge, we're 24 hours later, and I still got 36% left on the battery. So that is really, really good, especially compared to something like uh, the CMF Watch Pro with this similar setup. The CMF Watch Pro still had better battery life, or sp especially compared to something like the Samsung Galaxy Watch with this similar setup. So it's, I would say it's about on par. Now, one thing, tomorrow is a gym day for me. I'm recording this on the Thursday. Gym days for me are notoriously heavier days. So, we're really going to get the test for the battery life tomorrow, right? And I could tell y'all, I'm going to attempt to sleep with it like this. So, we're, we're really going to see 
how long this battery lasts. I'm going to attempt to let this drain down to 5% so I can do my first charge test. But I'm going to end up using this just like I was using the Samsung Galaxy Watch Classic. So most likely, I'm probably going to charge this in the mornings when I'm getting ready. All right, when I jump in the shower or before I jump in the shower, probably going to throw this on the charger. As I'm getting ready, it should have enough t enough time to get enough charge to hopefully get me through the day. Now, just for reference, depending on what I have to do that day, it can take me anywhere from about 45 minutes to an hour and a half to get ready. Yes, don't judge me. I'm disabled. It can take me a uh, it can take me a long time to get ready sometimes. Don't judge me. It is what it is. It just depends on what I have to do that day. Okay? But hopefully within that uh 45 minutes to an hour and a half time frame, we can get full charges on the Apple Watch SE to get uh a day and then some or hopefully we can get enough charge to get us through the whole day. So I'm anticipating charging this every day at the beginning of the day when I get ready. All right, but we're going to see how it does. And I do have the first setup set up on here, okay? So I have race to wake turned on right now. Then I have the brightness set to about, I want to say, 35%. Okay, so... Let me see here. What was it set to? Go back in here. Go to that watch face. Okay. Yeah. It was set to about 35%. Good, good, good. And ideally, guys and gals, I think that's where I'm going to leave it because this is nice and bright. And even outdoors, like I was doing some runs today... Outdoors, I could still easily see this even in direct sunlight. So I think I'm going to leave the brightness set to 35% on this one. And we're just going to rock out. But that, guys and gals, does it for this video. This 24 hours later follow-up video with the Apple Watch SE. I just wanted to make sure I get this done. I'm going to do my best to get this out probably tomorrow evening. Or most likely this will be... On Saturday, it depends on how I can get it out. But there you guys and gals have it. So our official review process for the uh, um, Apple Watch SE first generation has started. So y'all be on the lookout for the charging tests and all the other coverage that I do on smartwatches. And I hope you guys and gals enjoy the coverage. Also, tonight's video is being recorded with the rear-facing primary camera on the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus. And this is being recorded in 1080p in auto frames per second mode. So I won't know what frames per second this is actually recorded in until I watch the video back in post. But please let me know what you think of the overall video quality. Also, there is no external microphones hooked up, so let me know what you think of the overall audio quality as well. Now, it is dark outside. I got a beautiful beautiful shot of the sunset that y'all can't see behind the screen here, but it is super dark outside, so I do have my studio lights running and my smart lights running, so please also let me know what you think of the overall lighting. But that being said, all your feedback is greatly appreciated. Just remember to keep it respectful, please, when you leave your feedback down below in the comments. That being said, if this video piques your interest or you would like to know any or everything else about the Apple Watch SE first generation, I'm going to link up all my continued coverage down below in the video description. And if this video piqued your interest to the point to where you want to purchase anything featured in the video this evening, I'll leave all the affiliated purchasing links down below in the video description. And as the name implies, if you choose to make your purchase using those affiliate links, I do get a small percentage of commission that I do put back into the channel. And that's at no additional cost to you guys and gals. So that makes those affiliated buy links located in the video description a win-win for everyone. And like I said, if this video piqued your interest and you'd like to know more 
about the Apple Watch SE. I'm going to link up all of my continued coverage down below in the video description as well. So down below in the video description will truly be like a one-stop shop for you guys and gals and you should be good to go. All right, I got to get back to editing. I just wanted to take a break and record this video. Now I got to get back to editing other videos. So I hope everyone is having a great evening. I hope you guys and gals are staying safe out there and I will catch everyone in the next video. Have a good one, everybody. We are out of here. Peace. All right. We are, we are officially using everything Apple related to go with our daily driver. iPhone, AirPods Pro, Apple Watch. We, we are all Appled out right now. We'll see how this goes. I'm super excited. It, it was a little confusing. There was a little growing pains, but we figured it out. Anyways, let me not start rambling. Have a good one, everybody. I'll catch you guys and gals in the next one. Peace.